Hello, this is Angela Anderson. In this video, I am going to be showing you how to paint a sea turtle using acrylic paints. I'll show you step by step all the way through. All the materials are listed down in the description if you'd like to follow along with me. And let's get started. So I've got a large 12 by 16 inch canvas and I think I'm going to get a little bit larger brush here because I think I want to work a little bit faster. So I'm going to grab a large number 12 filbert from Robert Simmons Titanium. But any large brush will do. And I want to do the background in turquoise thalo, which if you don't have this color, you can mix thalo green and thalo blue together in equal measure and they'll give you a color similar to this. We're using acrylics today um, and I've got, let me go through the colors real quick, thalo turquoise, thalo green, teal, but that's mixed with this color plus white so you don't really need it if you uh, don't have it. Um, carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, titanium, unbleached titanium, uh, yellow oxide, cad yellow medium, this is raw sienna. This is not on our list, but I went ahead and put it out because I thought we might need it. It's similar to the yellow oxide. It's just got a little bit of extra brown in it. Um, quinacridone magenta, ultramarine blue, and thalo blue again. So, And then there's my white, the titanium white. So let's start out with this. And I think I'm going to grab a little bit of white and just slap it on my canvas here. I'm going to go ahead and spray my canvas slightly. I've got a just a regular old canvas panel, so this little bit of water down will help it uh, flow. Help the water flow, and I think I'm going to do a little bit lighter color down here toward the bottom, but I just really like this really deep turquoise color. This it course, it's one of my favorite colors anyway, so. thing. Now I know the background in my picture is more of a true blue so if you want to do that instead you could do like thalo blue or cerulean blue or something like that. That's just your own option. And I think I'm going to grab my sea sponge and I think that that's, that was in our um, list. If you don't have a sea sponge you could probably do this with um, with splattering. You could splatter instead or and I'm probably going to splatter too or you could use a large stiff bristled brush, but these are not too expensive. I'm going to wet it down. You always want to kind of dampen it a little bit and then squeeze it out dry so that it's got all the moisture out of it. Um, it'll just be slightly damp. I'm going to grab some of the white there and tap that in. might grab some of the thalo blue too just to have a, like a slightly different color. A little bit of white in there. Just tap it with I'm not loading a whole lot on my thing. It's just got a little bit of paint on there. You don't want to overdo it because if you've got too much paint on these, they'll kind of get away from you. It'll be hard to control. I'm just going to kind of do some little slight, I don't know, one of the photographs that I found had these really like little dot, dotty things in the foreground, has some coral. I just want, ooh, that's kind of interesting. Let's do that too. I'm going to grab some my fan brush and I'm just going to tap a few water drops on that drying paint. Now it won't work if your paint is already dry, so do this while it's in the process of drying and it'll lift. See how it's lifting off some of these? It kind of looks like bubbles maybe happening. You could go straight. If you don't like this, you can, that's going to be completely covered. So I want some of this to happen along these edges where we're going to see it. So most of this is going to be covering up. I don't really like the way that's looking. Let me do some dot down here. Getting some big splatters there. See, so yeah, it's just lifting that 
Sometimes this happens and you don't want it to happen. <laughs> but we're going to try to control it and make it work for us. So I'm just going to let it set there a minute. This paint is still was still dampening. It was just barely starting to dry. So it was probably... Because um, if you do it when it's, when it's first put on, you won't have any of this transfer of color onto your canvas. It'll lift it off white. So... Uh, oh yeah, I'm liking this effect. That's working really good for me now. Looking, isn't that cool? It's such a neat technique. I used this same technique when I did the, um, let's do some up here. When I did the, um, the kiss, the Klimt painting, we painted the background gold to start with, and then we painted bronze over the top, and then splattered it with water, and lifted it off, and it did this really cool. Um, so it almost looks like bubbles. Ooh, I'm loving this. Okay, I hope you guys like this too. Isn't that neat? Very cool. Okay, I'm going to let you take this, honey, and dry it really well for us. We have our first question here. Yes. Somebody said that, hey, you know, we have a hard, or they have a hard time with their uh, canvas moving around. Okay. And so they're wondering, what do you have on your desktop this that keeps it? This is one of those shelf liners. It comes in a roll, and it's the stuff that you put in your desk, or, you know, your shelves. Um, so, yeah, it's got a little bit of a grippy surface, so it doesn't move at all unless I, you know, I mean, I really have to push it to get it to move around. So th it works really good. Okay, there's my chalk. So let's draw our sea turtle. I was looking at my placement, and I he's kind of at a diagonal. I think I want to fill up this whole area with his shell is the main section. So I'm just going to put him right front and center right here, kind of using my fingers to figure out how big he needs to be. There's a slight arc there, and he's pretty narrow at the base kind of flares out a little bit. I need to leave room for his flipper though, so I probably need to end him. Let me look here. I need to put the flipper in so that I know where to put the end of his body. Okay, there's a little bit more narrow than that. So that's going to come down a little bit more like that. Nice thing about chalk is you can kind of adjust it as you need to. So there's very little space here between this and this, and then it kind of comes in and then starts angling back up. And this top of the shell is a little bit wavy. So I'm doing several multiple lines here, just kind of trying to get the placement. This is how I sketch. I don't usually go with a straight line and leave it. I usually kind of do multiple little small lines and then pick the one that I like the best. That's just what works for me. Because as you do it, you can kind of see more of the placement. There's a little bit of a curve here. It comes in and then goes back around. This is going to be his flipper area. So you might want to sketch this on paper if you are, you know, wanting to draw this yourself. And this back flipper goes almost to his back. It goes pretty far back. So I want to bring it all the way. Well, let me see. No, I think right about there. And then Angles in, up, yeah, and then this drops down here. There's kind of a smooth belly that curves up. Then that, and that's where that back flipper starts. Angles up. It's got a little wiggle right here, a little wiggle right here. And we did look it up. They do have, they do breathe air, so they have bubbles too so we may do some bubbles at the end too okay now we're cooking get all of that 
back on all of that. Sorry if you're trying to draw this along with me and I'm changing things on you. It's normal. This is just slightly angled up from this one. And a little bit smaller. You're not seeing as much of it because it's kind of at a different angle. So there we go. Then the neck kind of curves up between these two. Then the head, it's got a nice rounded chin mouth. He looks like he's frowning. He's got kind of almost a beak. Kind of, and I think it is kind of a hard shell beak. Goes around and this is about the same height as that so you can check that angle and make sure that you've got it about the same height and it'll come down to there. Then his eye is going to be uh, right about where this flipper meets this. Come straight up from there. That'll be the back side of that eye and it's angling down like this and it's got this beak section there there's the back side of the eye just making sure that I've got this drawing 100% right for you so that once we start painting we don't have to worry about changing anything because that's that's kind of a pain so yeah so that should make kind of an oval shape right there if you get it right this may be a little bit farther out minutes in and we've just done the background and drawing. <laughs> be like, come on and just move it along. I'm gonna grab the unble or the unbleached titanium. We're gonna use that on the shell. That'll be our undercoat color. And if we get that on there, we can put our other colors on and not have to worry too much about Just on this part. The bottom part of his belly is pretty blue, so I might actually fill that in a little bit differently, but we'll see. And as I get over here, I might actually pick up a little bit of the yellow oxide or raw sienna and just mix a little bit of that in just to give it a little bit of a brownish color. Let's blend them a little bit. This doesn't have to be perfectly smooth because it's, well, you want to get the ridges out of it, but uh, we'll be doing a lot of colors on top. We're just kind of trying to cover some of that turquoise. My mic rubbing? Nope. Need to do one. Okay. Mark's over here clicking on stuff. What you doing? What you doing? I don't even see what you did. You don't want to say. I boosted your mic level a little bit. Ah, oh, good. Because as you start painting, you get a little bit quieter, so. Thanks. So we had another question. Okay. Somebody asked. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush here. This is my Six Bright Summit. What? Go ahead. No, that's fine. That's uh, somebody wanted to know, would Southern Ocean Blue and Australian Sienna be good colors? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, those would be great. Um, I think Australian Sienna is equal to like a, oh, I'm trying to think of the yellow, Indian yellow, something like that. So it's a little bit brighter yellow than this one, I think. But it's, yeah, it'll work just fine. Be great. So we'll do this. We'll just... We did. It kind of kills me to cover up this really pretty turquoise. <laughs> I'm a little bit sad, <laughs> especially when you get really interesting spots like this whole section right here. I'm really kind of going to kind of mourn its loss <laughs> a little bit. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so we want to thank everybody who's joined us. If you're new to Angela's channel. Hit the subscribe button, click like on the down below if you like it, and you can join up our uh, other social media, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. All the links are down in the description. Also, there's a link to the brush guys.
for 5% off. You can get the list of all of Angela's recommended brushes. And use the code Angela Fine Art to get that 5% oh, off. Oh, that's right. Yep. I'm going to grab a little bit of the burnt umber here, and I'm just going to go, while this is wet, I'm just going to kind of line that out so that I kind of see where the diff that shell meet met the other one. Just kind of pull a little bit of that dark color down in there. I'll use this color in here. It's just a little bit different color. It's a little bit darker. A little bit of both. And that actually kind of comes down. I think it's a, more of that raw sienna color. That's actually kind of comes in a little bit more closer. this little S shape almost straight down and then curves out around the right but we're laying down the light colors first this time um, usually I do dark colors and work to light but there's a lot of uh, spots and so I just want the, the light color underneath so we can just work around the spots that way let me grab some Thalo green and add it to this. Grab a little bit of white. It's got a little bit of brown still in it, so it'll tone it down a little bit. I'm just going to use that as my base color for the belly area. So it's got a lot of green in it. So just save time. We won't have to put the green in later. Or we'll probably still add more, but It's definitely not white down there. There we go. I'm guessing that this one is um, kind of a mid-level. I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible. The hardest part is just going to be getting the, you know, the drawing done and the this little bit of blending that we're doing here, but the rest of the spots and things I think will go pretty easily. Let's use this color up here too. There's actually a lot of white on his neck, but it's like this greenish white color up here. So we'll do that color underneath. This will be his like chin color. So it kind of goes almost straight there. There we go. That's good. Good turtle. Um, looking at my picture there. Let's grab some thalo blue. Mix that in, and we'll do the thalo blue right here. It's actually kind of close to our background color, so. There's like a blue shadow right there. I'm just working into that wet paint a little bit. And then we'll grab a little bit more of that unbleached titanium. And just work out this flipper. They are flippers, right? That's what I'm going to call them. Okay. Hashtag sea turtle facts. <laughs> I'm making them, I'm realizing I brought it out a little bit far, so I think I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller right here. And it's actually a little bit more white, so I'm going to grab a little bit of white and put a little bit of that in. Just right there. It's not going to be clean. It'll be a little bit dirty white, so. so I've got these other colors, and I'm just... Kind of laying it out pretty thick and just blending it out very lightly once I have it on there. Um, and if you get too much on your brush, you can just wipe it off and keep on going. And it'll kind of act like a sponge and pick up a little bit of the extra whatever you've got on your brush. So that's looking all right, though. 
It's already looking like a turtle. We're doing good. I did this when I painted a turtle. It was so... Gosh, how long ago was that? Spencer was probably eight or nine, so how long long ago would that be? Eight, probably eight years ago, yeah. Uh, I painted a turtle for on a mural for my girlfriend's son. And it was like a 10 hour process. We did um, the whole room, you know, in 10 hours, which is pretty incredible. But of course I wasn't talking. I was booking it and getting as much done as I could within her budget. She, she budgeted for 10 hours. So I was like flying. So if you want to see that, the it's actually on my website if you want to see that mural. It's called Owen's Room on my website. It's under the murals section. Um, here, I'll pop up my website logo right there. There it is. <clears throat> so that's fun. I used to do murals a lot. I, I enjoy them, but I they're so physically demanding. I just don't want to get on my hands and knees anymore to do this. <laughs> that does not sound like fun anymore. I'd much rather sit in a chair and talk to you guys. <laughs> yeah, and there's really no job for me in that. I don't I can't do play by play for the murals. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I grabbed a little bit of the raw sienna there. I hope I didn't mention that. So all right, I'll click that back off. Speaking of logos, we got our new logo in this week. We're going to be rolling it out probably in the next couple weeks. But I absolutely love it. It is so pretty. It's got like flowers and a palette, and it's very me. I've been working with the graphic designer for a few weeks, actually. Okay, I'm noticing that this head is its pretty straight across right here. I kind of angled it away too much. Um, if you look at this thing here, this and this are pretty straight, right? But I've got mine more like a V. It's subtle, but I still feel like I need to, I need to do the round and then bring it so that it's this and this are almost straight lines there. So just changing a little bit. You are being very loud over there. Why do they make candy wrappers so dang loud? <laughs> I don't know. They can't sneak chocolate in around here anymore. It's like that in the movie theater. Have you ever snuck chocolate into the movie? <laughs> I know you have. But Me? it's no. like. <laughs> I've never snuck a two liter of Coke into a <laughs> movie before. <laughs> do you remember doing that? Just saying. <laughs> I think the statute of limitations is well expired on that yeah, one. Yeah, I think so. I think you guys need to comment in the after the video what what what's the weirdest what's the thing? biggest the weirdest thing you've ever snuck into in the movies. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I Somebody did. in this room did sneak in a two liter. And cups and for cups. all my friends. <laughs> 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 yep. <laughs> Not going to lie, that happened. <laughs> and that was just last week. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, it was well over 30, almost 35 well, years ago. in high school. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. I feel like his head's a little bit small. It is a little bit small. Let me, I'm going to bring it back a little bit into this. Right here, move the shell a little bit. That's better. Okay, I'm happier now. Little, little tiny changes make a big difference sometimes. It's amazing. I'm going to try not to leave my, my paint uh, brushes in the water too much because I'm don't want them to crack. These Princeton cost too much to <laughs> miss, miss uh, to abuse, whatever I. But they do keep trapped a lot of paint inside here. I noticed when I cleaned this one in particular yesterday that um, 
after I got done, I tested it. I always test it after I clean it on a white paper towel and you press down and see how that greens in there. It looked like it was clean, right? I cleaned it out of my water um, and I had even used soap and there was a little bit of green trapped in there. You definitely want to make sure that you always do that. Always test your brushes, even if they look clean because if you let that paint dry in there, it could really damage it because <clears throat> they're so hard to get clean after you've, you know. Okay, so let's get these cells figured out here. Uh, let me see what color I want. Let me just use some. We'll use brown since we're doing brown cells. These, it's a little bit damp still, but I think it'll work. So here's our here's our outline there. Just want to firm that up a little bit. It's gonna come down like this. Now that I get these colors on, I always I don't know why, but sometimes it's it, it's easier for me. It's just part of my process to see what I want to change or what I want to do once I get my paint down. And then it's like I can see these areas that I need to adjust. So there's, this is the, this arm. I'm just going to kind of use this watercolor pencil to line this out so that I know where to put some of my details. So there's his mouth. We'll make him look like he's got a little smile. I'm going to curve it up right there a little bit. And then it'll go down right there. So the nostrils are right here. They're pretty close together. There's a little bit of a split. Actually, they're a little closer than that. They're like right here. And then there's a line across. And this is actually... Actually, I need to let that dry because it's scraping off the paint. I'll come back to that. Sorry, guys. So let's do the, the shell. So I'm going to go up just a little bit from this and start my first little line. There'll be a line down, a diagonal, another diagonal here. This curves up. So it's going to be kind of like a butterfly shell or wing almost. Ooh, do it, honey. Mark's got a zoom button now. You can. This fancy camera has a remote. Look at that. It's so cool. We're such geeks. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh. Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> what, what movie is that from? Or is that a movie? Oh, it's like the the uh, Toy Story, <laughs> the little oh, the little the claw. The claw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is angled a little bit more. I'm gonna do it like that. So that's kind of splits our shell almost in half right there. I think that's about right. And then there's another one here. And then. I can't tell. It's kind of shiny on this thing, but I think there's another one back here. Yeah, that kind of goes like that. I hope you can see this. It's a little bit subtle, but I'm not trying to, I'm not doing it too dark because I don't want it to scrape off the paint that's still pretty Oh, dry. no, the sweet camera is right. picking it up very nicely. Good. I know. I'm so excited. I honestly, you guys have been blown me away those who have been supporting us on patreon i honestly was have been shocked at how quickly we've been able to meet some of our goals so we'll hopefully meet our second goal we met our first goal in like two weeks or something it was insane uh yeah so we uh we bought our monitor for mark but he it's not in yet it's back ordered so it should hopefully be here soon and then it will really we'll be able to buy our switcher and we got a new logo intro outro that I bought so we'll have a little beginner video like a beginning like professional it'll be we're gonna, we're gonna be like we know what we're doing pretty soon <laughs> it's amazing 
Okay, so I hope you're figuring that out. From these are coming to a point, and and then where these lines are meeting them. So there's you bring this up, and then there's like these V shapes here and here, and then another two lines there and there. So uh, so this one would have a line kind of coming from the V here at the top of this section. They're just barely seeing any of that. My shell is a little bit too rounded, but that's okay. I, it's fine. It's probably it's probably more like that. Uh, I probably made that back in too big, but that's okay. I I don't mind it. It's not. He's a turtle. He can have a. He can. He's special. And actually, these are not lining up. They're actually. There's lines in between. So there's two lines here and here on each of these. This one's actually got three. One here, 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 and then so curve this up. This curves up a little bit. This curves up and around and kind of curves back around like that. And I think there's another cell back here, but we're not going to be able to see that, so I'm not going to define it too much. There's two lines here and here. Okay, hope you can see that. And then I'm not going to even draw in the little spots, I don't think. I'm just going to kind of draw in where the large ones go. So there's kind of a section here where there's some la large ones that happen. And then all these other ones have the little teeny tiny spots. So like that, there's like a circle right there. I'm just going to kind of indicate that one. And then the color sort of fades right there around that eye thing. And then there's some dots along there. And there's a few random spots on the belly. But that's really the main thing we need to get started. We'll do the, the back first here because that's kind of the fun part. And I'm going to switch to um, like a long flat or if you have a, this is a quarter inch, um, you could use a brush like, like a round brush instead or, um, I don't know why I wet that down, I don't really want it wet. Um, a fan brush. I think I'm going to do a, few, a little bit with the fan brush first, and then we'll do a little bit of extra detailing with the these brushes here. So I'm going to grab the burnt sienna, just out. Of, yeah, just out a little bit, so you can see the palette. Yeah, there we go. Burnt sienna, and let's grab a little bit of the yellow oxide. I, it, I'm mixing it above this green mixture here, so. We're going to have a little bit of all three of these colors. I got a little bit of the Burnt Sienna. I mixed it with a little bit of the Unbleached Titanium and a little bit of Yellow Oxide too. So it, I don't want to over blend it because I want all these kind of lovely streaks happening. So there, that's kind of what I want to happen on my shell. So if we do this right, we may not have to do anything else. but. It looks like Well, you better do it right then. <laughs> I'm going to start from here and I'm going to drag it in and it's going to kind of have this sort of starburst thing that happens. So it'll be like that. There we go. This fan brush is a little bit too small for this big space here, but it's kind of working. Let's do it here. I'm just leaving a little bit of space between these two for that light color. So they're all kind of radiating from 
this in towards that spot. I don't know. I'm not liking the, I like the texture that's happening, but I'm not liking the level of control that I've got. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this large flat. Or it's a long, like, so I said large, um, I meant long. Um, it is a number two Princeton. And we'll try dry brushing those streaks a little bit. We'll take a little bit more finesse, but I think we might get a little bit better control. Won't have as much of a fuzziness as all. There we go. Yeah, that's better, I think. I like that better. Okay. So I'm just kind of dragging it through these colors. I'm not really worried too much about what exact color I'm getting here because there's kind of variegated things happening. Let's grab the raw sienna and we'll kind of make a little, that's just kind of a solid-ish section right here and then it kind of radiates out to the other and I'm just going right on that line. I'm going to cover the line up and then we'll leave a space in between our cells. There we go. Grab that unbleached titanium. Maybe a little bit of cad yellow. I need to spray my paints are getting sticky. I may decide that the Right would work better. I don't know. Let's still figure it out. Yeah, there we go. A little bit of yellow in there just to kind of give it a little bit extra different color. All right, go ahead and zoom in a little bit, honey, so they can see a little bit more of the detail what we're happening here. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So I'm just using versions of all of these colors. These are the Rossiana yellow, Caddy yellow medium, the yellow oxide, burnt sienna, and well, unbleached titanium. So, whoops, I don't know why I did that. I have no idea why I did it that direction. Okay, so this is all going to kind of come from right here. It's like a section of the shell right here that All these are kind of starbursts from that spot. Just like the spokes on a wheel. So everything points to that, no matter where it starts. All kind of ends up right there. And I'm letting some of that background color seep through too. You get that dark, start with the darker color close to the edge, and then it kind of gets lighter as it goes towards the. Mm, center spot. Yeah, let's grab. Burnt sienna here. Oh yeah, put my palette down. Keep forgetting and holding it. Get out of that habit so you guys can see because we're going to have a palette cam soon hopefully too so you can we can zoom back and forth. We're going to just be too fancy for school. Grabbing some of the yellow oxide here. Go back over. I'm kind of finding that doing it uh, a little bit wetter is sort of a little bit easier. So I'm adding, I'm not dry brushing it really. It's kind of more like a blending together process. I'm going to grab a little bit of that unbleached titanium and tap it between these lines here just to kind of set that back in there. There we go. So first two cells. Not too hard. These are actually really, really fun to paint. Um, let's do this one in this direction. So this one, this, this is the dark section right here. 
I'm really not sure where these books are going, but I th will point everything to this spot. So it looks like in my picture that that's where it's all coming from. Leave a little space. And if you're worried about your edge, you could actually use a little bit of tape, but I don't think it'll be too difficult. We'll just set our brush right along that edge and just pull down towards towards the bottom there. Grab some raw sienna. There you go. Grabbing the burnt sienna. You can put some nice dark right there. Sorry, got it turned around there, on you? I hope I was in camera, was I? Sure. Yep. Yeah, you were. Okay. <laughs> well, you're looking at your phone, so I wasn't sure. Well, I'm taking pictures, posting to ah, Instagram for you. Thank you. I'm going to bring this up just a little bit more. You notice in there, I'm not oh. just a pretty face. <laughs> <laughs> not sure if I'm even that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you are. <laughs> that reminds me of the Mark, Mark show. I don't know if you guys watch the show. Uh, uh, what is the show I'm thinking of? <laughs> Fixer Upper with uh, Chip and Joanna Gaines. And uh, they crack me up. And uh, she, she posted an Instagram of him pumping gas. And it was like <laughs> slow-mo with his hair blowing in the wind. And she was like, Chip Gaines, you look good pumping gas. <laughs> That was yeah. awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was his so hair funny. is blown in the wind yeah, and like, he's got his glasses on. He kind of on. poses. He kind of like, yeah. he didn't even know she was filming him, though. Right. That's the best part of it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Cracks me up. I would do that. That's totally something. <laughs> yep. I can relate. <laughs> Not that I would secretly film you or anything, but. <laughs> That's a little creepy. I would teach you about, or I would tease you about <laughs> me. being cute when you're pumping gas. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I don't have to do it. <laughs> All right. So I'm kind of changing. It, it kind of depends on, it looks like kind of this, every, all of these corners are all where this sort of sunburst focus is happening. So it'll be on this one. Yeah, it'll be on this corner too. And then actually these are the picture I'm looking at. I'm looking at a different picture actually, and it looks like they're on this side. So I may change that a little bit and pull them this direction. I've already got them going. Yeah, I actually need to do that. Now that I'm looking at it, it looks a little bit funny. So they actually go to this corner. This is the corner. So we'll change this direction and pull these this way. Same thing here. Sorry, guys. And then this one's fine because it's going to that corner. If you don't have your raw sienna, you can mix something similar by using a little bit of burnt uh, burnt umber with the yellow oxide. You can get something really close to the burnt sienna color. So if you don't, or, or raw sienna, I mean, color. So don't feel like you have to go out and buy it. You can just mix a little bit of burnt sienna or burnt umber into, into your yellow oxide to get this color. Okay, so these are going this way. I'm going to have to get a little bit of the lighter color here and sort of streak in some of this 
this direction. There we go. There we go. These are so fun. They really are fun to paint. I just, something about these kind of streaky lines, things that, I don't know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It won't look like mine, so don't try to make it look exactly like mine. Just kind of get it close. I'm tapping in with this light. set the brush down and you don't drag it you just move your wrist and just kind of do or really just kind of your fingers and kind of lift it and flick it towards the center there sometimes I'm dragging it like if I'm wanting to pull lines I'll drag it but I'm still kind of this is the motion I'm not moving my hand at all I'm just kind of holding it over where I want it to go and starting my line and dragging it and like this. Kind of a fulcrum motion. photograph doesn't have as much kind of this detail in the in the uh, shell but I found another photograph with this turtle that had all these amazing stripes in his shell so I thought I'd kind of add a little bit of that to our turtle I think they're the same kind it's just ours, maybe our photograph is a little bit washed out or something those sections a little bit and I'm not doing a straight line I'm just kind of tapping because they're not perfectly straight in the, in the turtle they're kind of in there yeah that looks good okay I'm gonna pull down a little bit grab some of the burnt sienna We'll start back here. Just there's a little bit of this. They're not really most of this is lit up, so I'm not gonna do a lot of detail in these back ones. Just gonna put a little bit and it's kinda coming from that split down. So this is burnt sienna straight. But I've still got my brushes full of all these other colors, so it's kinda mixing somewhat. Pulling back through with the raw sienna here in the opposite direction just to give it a little bit of that color. So that goes up over his shoulder like that. Grab some blend, glazing medium. My paint's starting to get a little bit dry, so that'll help give me a little bit more time to fiddle with. Yeah. I'm gonna dip my brushes back in the water that are that I've used. They're setting out, but I don't want them to dry. So, okay. Burnt 
sienna. Using the edge of my brush here just to kind of draw in a few little lines. All right, so I've got burnt umber now and I'm going to use it. These are pretty dark. There's some spots. We'll start using those for the spots. There's a crease right here, so it's got like a little dots coming up around their shell. Just using the very corner of this brush to kind of do those. We'll pull some color. We're going to make kind of a V-shape here, and then I'm going to drag through lightly, very lightly, to sort of blend in some of this. Oops, that one. Grab some unbleached titanium there. We're just going to clean that up a little bit. And we'll use that color to kind of tap along that edge. The This shell has a little bit of a transition Right, like a shadow sort of happening. So I'll use that unbleached or unbleached titanium with burnt sienna right there to kind of do a little bit of a transition line between those two sections. You're kind of seeing that leading edge of it facing us a little bit. And here again, it's not perfect. It's cut. Well, this part's a little bit smooth. I'll smooth that out a little bit. Right there, but over here, it's kind of... It merges into the body, I think, right there. Okay, grab the turquoise color. We'll add a little of the turquoise down here with this brown. And I don't want to lose this really pretty color, so I'm going to keep it pretty close to the shell. And I need a little shadow right there. And there's a little bit of one on this one, too. Here. Let me clean that out. I'm going to grab Thala Blue. I put out way more of this than I need, and I don't think I'm going to use the Ultramarine at all. So, sorry. Uh, let's grab a little bit of white. So you need to take that off your supply list? Yeah, I'm going to add Rossi in a... Thala Blue right here. And really kind of flick it this way. Get those wrinkles in his neck happening. And then there's a pretty dark shadow right there. I'm going to grab a little bit of that burnt sienna, or burnt umber, I mean. Not quite that dark though. I'm gonna use the thalo green instead. Let's see what that does. Might even grab a little teal. That's better. 
It's dark, but it's not super, it's not quite as dark as I'm making it there. And then this is close to the same value. It's just a little bit lighter right here. It's like the same color, but it's transitioning to the neck there. Okay, that's better. It's going to look really weird at this stage because we're kind of working out these shadow colors. So I'm just going to bear with me while we're working that out. Get some phthalo green. He's really kind of blending into this background too. There's a lot of uh, light reflecting onto his chin there. I'm going to grab some of the turquoise white, the background color here. I'm gonna kind of blend. Woo! I need a different brush. This brush is not quite blending for me. Mm, let's try this one. This is a three eighths inch angle. If I can get into these tight spots with it, and I should be able to do some of my spots. Though I'm not sure if this will be too big. We'll see. It's always good to use the largest brush that you can find and really honestly uh, or largest brush that you can fit into the space that you're trying to fill with a color because it just saves time not having to go over and over again in some areas. Okay, that's looking better. Let's grab some white now. And... A little bit of yellow oxide, just to soften it a little bit. This area here, we've got some white streaks coming down over the top of that. We doing okay, hon? I'm doing great. Looks like our stream's not having any issues again, so. No, it's looking great. And, you Sorry know, about that. It looks like it's just like you're in the room here. Really? With us. Yeah, I mean, it's so crystal clear. That's great. Yeah. That's amazing. Amazing. Okay, white here. And we'll start laying in some of these white areas. Just around the mouth. Some of these cells that are around his eye. just using this paint, white paint to sketch out my where I want my spots to go. So this save me time later. I know I did not spend this much time on it when I did the mural, so I don't know how I did it that fast, but I was booking it. It's like when I'm not, I'm, it's really intuitive and when I get into those modes, it's really interesting space because I lose all track of time and I have to literally send set um, timers for myself so that I'll remember to pick up my kids from school or whatever I need to do because I literally lose time it's really amazing uh, what happens when and we go with that dinner a lot because <laughs> because of that <laughs> That's why God invented restaurants. You have to be very patient with your artist spouses. That's all. Because <laughs> they're like, what? It's dinner time? They're just, okay. Well, I just feel like I just sat down in my studio and at noon and now it's five o'clock. Okay. <laughs> I've got uh, yellow oxide. I think I picked up a little bit of, little maybe a little bit of burnt sienna or burnt 
uh, raw sienna. I don't know why I keep wanting to call it burnt sienna. All right, so I'm going to use the burnt umber now, and I'm going to start. It might be a little bit dark. I'm going to add a little bit of. All right, so I'm going to use this around the eye. I'm just going to tap, tap, tap with this color. I'm going to just turn it so that the tip is facing down. I'm just going to tap. We've got that other color underneath, so that kind of light green color. So it'll still show through. It'll give kind of an interesting texture. Um, grab dip the tip of it into the burnt umber there, just the very tip. And I'm gonna face it down and I'm gonna do these little dots right here that happen above his eye. Now you can switch to a smaller round brush if you want instead, if you're scared of doing this. I like to use these brushes because you get uneven and unpredictable results, which is a lot of times sort of what you want with this kind of thing so I like that fact that it's a little bit more random maybe let's use a little bit of it and pull up here there's another, there's like a V shape in here that I can tuck my brush down into. Move it. Very good. Okay. Grab, I think I need I'm going to try this little brush here. So there's burnt umber here. Now we're going to use it, kind of outline the eye. It kind of comes right up like that and sort of blends down. And then there's some, I'm gonna grab the unbleached titanium and mix that in and we'll just kind of blend those together a little bit. If you get too much on there like I did there, just wipe your brush clean. Come back with a dry brush, tap along that edge. I can grab some of that white that was that color. There we go. Grab some glazing medium there just to kind of help it blend a little bit. And then this is actually the back side of the eye you're seeing. I use that. I'll use a small round. Grab some burnt burnt umber here, and I'm going to dot little dots on that. I will clean these up a little bit over here because they got a little bit messy. Throw some shadow and let's go ahead and grab some black and we'll fill in the eye so it won't look as weird. kind of rounded right here and then it kind of comes to a point back here and I'm going to grab the teal while I've got that black on my brush and I'm going to do a little bit of a rim. There's just kind of a slight, there's really not a lot of reflected light down here. 
I uh, looked a lot of sea turtle photographs to try to see how the light would reflect in their eyes, but there wasn't a lot of reflection. So we'll just kind of give them a little bit of a pupil and call it good. I'm going to grab some unbleached titanium again. That's really our base color for this. And I'm going to outline that eye just a little bit. Just a little. Tap, tap, tap. I'm not doing like straight solid strokes there. It'll help kind of define it a little bit, but doesn't look perfect. And then he's actually got somewhat of an eyelid right here, so I'm going to use this sort of draw a little bit of an eyelid. I want a little dark color above it though, so if you're losing that line, go back in with maybe some burnt umber and raw sienna on the brush and just draw in a line above it just to outline it a little bit between the there and the spots. Okay. Grab some of that burnt sienna or raw sienna. Keep calling it that. Sorry guys. You know what I mean. And a little bit of unbleached titanium there and I'm gonna find that a little bit better right there. There, there's a little bit of highlight there, and then there's a little bit of kind of the V-shape right here. There we go. Not bad. Um, I might, let's try, I want to do just a tiny bit of white. Just, just, just there. Okay, and it's it's kind of was a dirty white. It was more like the unbleached titanium there. That's making me happier, I, I think, just to have a little tiny bit of reflection, even though it's not in the photograph. Okay, it doesn't look so much like an alien or something. I don't know. Had to do it. Uh, Rossiana here. Rossiana tapping, tapping. A little bit of Rossiana here. Well, we need to put his nostrils in. So a little bit of um, burnt umber with a little bit of white mixed in. And right in between the nostrils, there's going to be this dark section right here. It doesn't go all the way to the edge, but it's close to it. So there's like a light white line right right on the other side of it and then this whole area is pretty dark right here I'm just using small brush strokes here and it seems to be working pretty well for me okay but are really dark there there is I'm noticing grabbing the unbleached titanium there is a line right here kind of does this Y shape right there and I'm going to brighten up that outside edge just a little bit There's where my nostrils are going to go. There's like white around them, so I'm going to outline them a little bit and just sort of pull down. Grab some... I think we're going to just go for it and do black here. It's kind of brown. I don't know. We'll use a little bit of brown too. 
right there. It's very small. And this one, you're only seeing part of it. They're probably closer together. I'm gonna make that one smaller. Right here. Okay. A little bit of unbleached titanium and I'm gonna highlight along that outside edge of that eye just to round that out a little bit. All right, he's looking pretty good. I think let's keep going with the spots here. I'm I'm enjoying using this round here. This is the Princeton number one round, so Seems to be doing well for me. I'm just going to keep on going with it. And I'm going to use the burnt, burnt Umber. We'll fill in our little spots here. And I'm just going to use a little bit of watered down paint this time. Just slightly watered down. I think I might be able to control it a little bit easier than the dry brush. This canvas is not a good quality canvas and so the texture on it is really heavy and it makes it harder to dry brush on one of these because um, it just grabs that paint and doesn't want to let go. So it's hard to, to drag out lines and things with it. So watering down my paint a little bit. I'll even use a little bit of glazing medium. It's actually kind of I think working pretty well, so I may change my tactics here on it. It's a little bit different way of blending the rest of this. So when I'm blending with the wet or watered down paint, what I do is use a more water or more blending medium in the areas that I want lighter and of course I've got the darker or the color underneath so it's going to show through a little bit and then I can go back in with more straight color or you know darker and go over the dark areas the areas that I want really dark with color that has less of the light lightened color in it that's working well there's a spot that goes along this back side here. Just barely using any paint there. Actually kind of wraps around like that. There's another one here. Another one here. I'll put my wrinkles in there. Okay. How's the picture looking? It was looking really good. Did the signal get lost for folks or were they was uh, it just buffering? Some people had buffering, others okay. not so much. All right, I'm, yeah. I may just have to... No, no. We'll definitely change the settings. No, the settings are fine. Is it Spencer? It's having two sons... Unbelievable. ...watching videos. Unbelievable. <laughs> really? So... Um, that, yeah, they're, they're grounded. <laughs> Especially the 26-year-old or 20... What how old is he? 23? 24. 24. Thank you. 23, 24. Yeah, almost 24. Yeah. yeah. He's grounded That's, for sure. He's totally grounded. And get his butt back to basic uh, <laughs> to his army job. Go. <sighs> they know better. Did you kick him out of the house? Just tell him to go somewhere. <laughs> tell him to go down to where's their Wi Fi set? They can go. They to can go to Starbucks. Starbucks. Go to Starbucks. Sit down. 
You can watch your videos at Starbucks. <laughs> On the Wi-Fi. Dudes. <sighs> Unreal. So, yeah. Unreal. Even though we give them the warning and tell them that we're going yeah, live. I know. To get okay. off the internet. Get off the internet. We're going live. <laughs> Unbelievable. They've probably been doing this this whole time yeah. and they've been getting away with it. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. Now we know that they've been doing it. Yeah. They just can't get away with it anymore. Kids. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Our perfect little angels. <sighs> okay, this is what needs to be higher, higher up. I put it too low. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. There, they're gonna get talking to. Okay, this is the Ross Sienna here. A little bit. Just been blending in. I need to be talking, telling the colors. Sorry, guys. I'm messing with some of this. Oh, he's looking good. I'm really putting a lot of focus on the face because I want it to be the, you know, the focal point. Um, wish he was in our third area. So if I did it again, I'd probably move his head down back to the third, but that's okay. And when I say the third, if you split your canvas into third this way and thirds this way, you've got your focal point area, which is really about right here. So I wish I his eye was hitting right about there. So I'd probably have to make him a little bit smaller to get it to get it there, but it is what it is. It's fine. That's what happens when you don't prep. Sorry, guys. I'm taking some really bright white. I'm just gonna highlight around the eye there. Give him a nice bright eyelid, and then give him a little bit of a smile. Put a little highlight along the top of that lip there. Keep on going. This is working well to do the glazing with the unbleached or burnt umber here. So I'm going to keep on going with that. There's another thing here. There's it's nice because you it, they're kind of like these little cells. It's, it reminds me of the G, um, like a giraffe spots, you know. Um, so they all kind of tuck up next to each other. It's like a little puzzle. So honestly, if you don't do yours exactly like mine, as long as you kind of just, you know, don't leave a big amount of space in between these, these all kind of have almost the same amount of space in between the spots. So just kind of leave this amount of space, the same amount of space around them, and you can adjust it. It doesn't have to be exactly... Yeah, I brought his mouth way up here. It actually goes way down here. Uh, I'll go ahead and move it. Because there's one more spot right here that happens. This is actually farther down, but... So you're going to put glasses on him like you did the fox and the, <laughs> and the bear? I don't think so. Hipster turtle. Hipster turtle. No? All right. I'm going in with the unbleached titanium. I'm just going to clean that line up there. Man bun? <laughs> no. No? Okay. Sorry. I think in Dory, Dora, the Pixar one, they were kind of surfer dudes. So, like, dude, totally surfing the... Whatever, I don't know, I remember what he said. That was, he was one of my favorite characters. Those movies were awesome. Okay. So I'm just going back in and outline a little bit. You notice how I'm kind of making it a little bit lighter, darker in places. That'll give us that kind of blended look without having to work that hard at it. So I'm going to come real close to these, not quite not touching, but we'll do this long one right here. 
It's in the crease of the neck. <clears throat> Looking good. How long have we been on? Almost two hours. So that's good. I figured this would be about two and a half, so I think we're about about right. Oh, so you didn't tell me that. I didn't plan well. Why? I'm gonna run out of food. <laughs> You're gonna have to make an emergency supply run. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to. Do you need anything at the store? <laughs> no. Okay. Good. I'm good. Okay, let's start doing some of these. Oh, he's crying. He is. Your my stomach is gonna start growling. I didn't have lunch, so. It's all going. This is the last of the Mona chocolate. Oh boy. Thank you, Mona. And you're going to eat it. You want some? No. It's fine. I can't, I can't eat it and talk at the same time. Okay, so blend in a little bit of this. This is, I grabbed a little bit of the raw sienna. You might just zoom out a little bit because you can't see the palette anymore and I haven't been doing a good job of telling people what colors I'm using here. There we go. Okay, yeah, he looks good. He's looking good. All right, I think I'm liking the colors here. I might add a little bit of white. Um, there's kind of like these little white spots, so I'm going to just kind of do some wrinkles in his neck with it. Little dabbing lines there. Kind of give him some highlights around his. Whoop. And his mouth there. If I get too much paint on, sometimes I just tap it off. It's the fastest way. Just blend it a little bit. All right. I need to stop getting so fidgety about the details here. It's kind of taking a long time. Okay, let's put some like dots along the top here with unbleached titanium. Grab the let's grab the yellow oxide here. We'll do some yellow oxide streaks down here. Dab, dab, dab. This hilarious kind of got these little white speckles or something. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of unbleached titanium too and just sort of do these little speckles right here. This area is pretty dark, so I'm not going to really do a whole lot with it, but I think that looks pretty close. We'll see once we get more details in, we may do a little bit more to it, but I'm going to use some of this color down here too. Just to soften up that area a little bit. This actually comes down a little bit more like this is the first cell right here. Right where this no, that's wrong. There's one right up here. Okay, so I'm not I'm not far off. There's that. So two cells there. There's a third one right here. That hits right about where that body starts. And I'm using burnt umber again here for these. So. It's watered down. We'll grab the yellow oxide. <clears throat> A little bit of the green. And some unbleached titanium there. We'll use that as our kind of color in between here. Actually, I need more bright right here. 
This is unbleached titanium right there. Go along that edge with that. There's noticing there's a really bright highlight right along that back edge there. How you doing, hon? Doing super. Hanging in. Yep. So Would you far give me some good. clean water? Sure. those out if you don't mind. Okay, burnt umber here. We'll just keep on going with these spots. There's a lot of them, so you're just going to have to Three dots here. There's one that kind of wraps around that front side. And then we're just going to start making these little cells here. This first one I'm just going to kind of use to sketch in what I'm seeing here. So. Like I said, they don't have to be perfect. We're just trying to get, just making sure that you leave a little bit of space in between them. And if you boo-boo and go over the line, just tap, tap back in that in-between color. Grab that unbleached titanium and tap back in between them to separate them back out. Grabbing the unbleached titanium here, and I'm gonna outline this edge of the wing there, or the wing, huh? Flipper, there's like a bright edge. I'll grab white actually and mix it with what's on my brush. We'll just tap in this flipper, has this kind of edge right here. I hope this isn't too complicated for y'all. I think I'm kind of getting into these details here a little bit much. Going a little on the realism side, I'm going to grab some burnt umber and blend back over. Okay, that's better. Just was looking weird to me. This front flipper here was not part of the rest of the body. Mm. Sorry. Thank you, Anne. Grab some yellow. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow on top. Some of these. This is the yellow oxide. Uh, which brush are you using right now? This is the number one still, the number one round. I have I did his whole face with this one too. It's been it's been working pretty well for me. It's just firm enough to be able to do this, you know, a little bit of blending, but it's got enough flexibility to also get these fine details in. Because sometimes with the firmer brushes, they they don't hold a good edge, if that makes sense. Like they they don't want to come to a point for you. They want to 
go straight out because they're so firm, you know, and they, they're not good for small details. Usually the, the, usually I use the very, um, flexible, more flexible brushes for details. But this one's actually really, that's what I like about these Princeton ones. I really am like loving on them because they have the best of both worlds. They're just, just right for what I like, to that, the way I like to paint because I can get the details, but they're still firm enough with these heavy body acrylics to hold a good edge so you can do some of these finer details and still be able to blend when you need to because sometimes when you do the finer details with a uh, you know detail brush or a softer flexible brush then when you go to blend with it it kind of flops around it doesn't want to to uh, be able to blend but this one's kind of does both so these, all of these are pretty, I don't know what they're made out of. I know, I don't think it's Taclon because it would have said in the description. I think it's a different kind of fiber. Usually I use Taclon. Okay, we're getting there. I hope these spots don't keep you from trying this one. It's, uh, this is really fun. It, they're, it's not that hard. I'm going to add a little turquoise down here toward the bottom because this bottom edge has got that turquoise shadow happening. So just add a little bit of turquoise to my burnt up burnt umber here for these last couple ones. like a little jigsaw puzzle just filling in little boxes honestly don't have to be exactly like as long as you leave these little edges in between them you can make whatever shapes you want really you could spell out your name if you wanted I mean honestly you could <laughs> raw sienna here actually let's get some of this burnt sienna we'll add a little bit of this more the color, kind of redder color in here. Some of these up here. Just a little bit of this color on top of that burnt umber. I'm gonna redden it up slightly. Grab some more burnt umber. And we need to just book it so we can get this done before we lose it completely. My picture is burnt umber, but I'm looking at the screen and he's much more of this bronzy burnt sienna color, so add a little bit of that to some of these spots here.
I've mixed them turquoise and with the brown to answer these spots here. They're a little bit more shadowed. Some sort. There's not as many, thank the Lord. Okay, there. Let's grab some burnt, clean that out. We'll have to shadow some of this. I'll have to, we're not quite done 100%, but we're getting there. Let me grab some burnt or raw sienna. And I'm going to add a little bit of it along the edge here. There's some. This is one of the water here. I'm just going to kind of add a little bit of this tone to the leading tip of that flipper. A little bit up here. It's got a lot of water in it, so I'm just kind of changing the tone of the color or the color of the that area get my finger to blend it out a little bit <clears throat> yeah I'll stick with this we'll do with the spots and then we'll grab some tit unbleached titanium mix it with the burnt sienna there these are a little bit lighter colored. We'll do spots along the front of the flippers. These are all kind of triangle shapes, looks like. And don't forget his back paw. No, I won't. Okay. Back paw. <laughs> okay, Paul. Here we go. So our streaming problems are over, looks like. Maybe. Hopefully I shouldn't have said something. Mm -hmm. That'll happen again. So far, so good. Going back in with a little bit of just the burnt umber here. And tapping in a little bit of darker right there. Okay, a little bit on along the edge. Just blending down a little bit there. There's a spot right there. A couple spots here. And there's kind of some random, I don't know what that is, but we'll just put a few little random spots. Wrinkling. It's looking pretty good. I think all we need to do is change some of the values. We need a shadow down here and a shadow right along this flipper there. Let's do the back one and we'll, we need to do some on the belly too. We're not done. We are, this guy's got a lot of detail. Plus I'm using kind of a small brush for this, but just making it go faster or probably by using a bigger brush, but Eh, not liking that color. Let's use the yellow oxide instead. I'm going to grab my bright. Mix a little bit of this color in just where I'm going to put those spots. Grab a little bit of the unbleached titanium and our turquoise color in the background and a little bit of that color right along there there's still like a highlight a little bit more of the light color Maybe some white even. Let's use it on here too. This flipper has a highlight going all the way down right here. This is white with the 
unbleached titanium, this white with the background color, basically. So it's a good sh shadow for our turtle. It's given us a highlight here. Just kind of tapping, doing these little light brush strokes so that it blends a little bit. There we go. That looks nice because it looks like that water's reflecting the light onto his belly a little bit. Just a little bit right here too. And there's a little bit on his back of his shell here. Mm. I don't know, I like that. I'm gonna wipe that off. Okay, let's see. I want to grab that turquoise. We got a little bit of thalo blue to it. And some glazing medium. Wipe most of it off my brush, so and I'm going to glaze this area right here. All along this flipper. So it's thalo blue, it's the turquoise color from the background. We're just adding a really nice dark shadow right there. Just you gotta get those values in there. If you don't have these dark, dark areas, it just looks flat. And he'll look like he's his arms are sticking straight out and they don't have any curve to them. So having the highlight here and the dark here makes it look like it's turned on its side. So it's real important to do these little, get the values right. Even though there's kind of a pain sometimes. Okay, there's nice and dark. Right through there. Okay, good. A little bit of dark right under here too. Just a little bit. And then let's use that color on this flipper to do a shadow right here. Glazing medium turquoise for this. We've got all those light colors in there. Let's grab some burnt umber too. Glaze with that. Glazing medium burnt umber. Wipe most of it off. Use it lightly and if it's not blending grab some more just glazing medium and go in with that uh, might need a little bit more actually it's still not quite dark enough it's almost it's almost so dark down here that you don't see the separation between the the flipper or the cells so get it almost so dark that you can't see the separation and then if you get too much on you can kind of wipe it off but that's about how dark we want it right there any darker and those cells will disappear we don't want that I'm gonna grab the white on the edge of my I'm gonna tap that white right along that leading edge of that flipper I've got the same brush that's but it's just along the edge so just keep it straight and I'm just tapping it's kind of it goes all the way down see how that pulled that forward do the same thing on this one Okay, it actually didn't quite go down that far. Right there, 
And I'm going to go over this just a little bit with that white, just to kind of tone that down right there. Okay, that's better. Now he's looking good. Let's use that white right here too, just to kind of just tone down just that little area right there. We're just glazing with that white. This is yellow oxide plus white. There's more yellow in that right there. Blend over the top. There's just these little random, like, I don't know what they are, but there's like little unevenness in his flipper right there. Some of this color down here. Add a little bit to this over the top of that. Yellow oxide here. Let's grab the unbleached titanium, and I never did kind of clean these up. Right here, these between the spot lines here. Well, thank you. Turn what off? Oh, yeah. We don't need that anymore. Well, we'll need it for the... Yeah, I guess. Yeah, we can turn it off. They've got the image, so... At this point... Um, the image was one that I got off Pixabay, grabbing white here. And uh, so... But I uploaded it in the group under reference images, so... A few... I think I, it may have just been the in the promo for this, not a reference video, I'm not a reference image. Adding white again. There, burnt umber. Let's do the little bit of the turquoise since we're on the underbelly. And sorry, Mark's yawning over there, so he's definitely ready for a break. Uh, there's just these random. That's too dark. Let's grab more brown. A little bit of glazing medium to lighten it up. Okay, there's these random spots here, so we don't have to be too particular about where we put them. They're just kind of dabs, and some larger, some smaller. Don't get too caught up in... Don't repeat. That's the main thing. You just don't want it to look like you've manufactured all the same size little dots. So, there we go. That's not bad. And it goes right here. There's dots all along that belly. And some of them are bigger than others, so I'm going to go back in and kind of define a few shapes in these merge a few of them. They kind of merge together. Grab some of that yellow oxide, mix that with the burnt sienna, or burnt umber, I mean. Add a few dots in with that. Go in with that yellow oxide along underneath here. Kind of soften that color right there. It comes all the way down there. And grab some of the teal color with the unbleached titanium. And this is more highlighted right along here, so I'm going to put that highlight back in right there. Got a big belly. It comes down low right here. Let me... Let me, uh... Mix up a little bit that background color. I'm going to flatten this out right here. A little bit right there. Tap, tap, tap. Blend it in. 
these a little bit darker. Just cleaning up that outline there. Okay, better. We'll use that dark color on here too. It's almost like this flipper here where it almost blends in and becomes the same color right here as that background. So we'll just blend that color over it and it'll sort of disappear into the background. Nice. Let's do the same thing on the underside of his flipper right here. This area right here is really dark, turquoise. Turquoisey. Got a lot of water on my brush. Didn't mean to do that. Burnt umber. Water it down a little bit. I start with the biggest cells. I find that that's the easiest way of doing it. This traceable is going to take forever. To draw, <laughs> to just, I'm thinking to myself, oh, darn it. But what you can do if you don't want to have to draw these out yourself, you know, you can just get that traceable and pl place it over. Once you get that background, you know, layer in, and then don't don't do the traceable first and try to paint around it. the bright white again and we'll just pull a little bit of it forward by outlining a little bit of this area in here with this really bright white the outside of the flipper again just this top side <clears throat> Grab a little bit of it and add a little bit to the shell up here. Whoops, a little bit of white highlights just to brighten up some of those areas. I'll pop them forward, make it a little bit crisper. wipe most of it off and I'm going to kind of dry brush some white right here. A little bit more white right there. Sometimes you need to put these highlights in a couple of times because the colors will dry darker and sometimes they'll seep through the highlight color like your white here. Sometimes it's it takes a couple coats to get a really good bright coating. I think I like the 
back flipper. I think it needs a little bit dark right here. There's a shadow that's pretty dark right there. And put a little bit in there too. Just tap it out. Got a little too much water on my brush there. I think we're done. What do you think? Did I miss anything? I think I got it all. It looks pretty cool to me. Okay, let me zoom out there. Oh, no, I'll zoom out. Okay, oh, you zoom, you do it. Yay! That's good, that's good. <laughs> zoom back in? Go back in, yeah. Back in, back in. Stop. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure you sign it. I'm going to grab my... Uh, my fiber cast, paper castell that I like to use on these kind of paintings, and I'll sign mine really quick. Thanks, guys, for watching today. I know this was a long one, and we had a few issues with the stream. Fortunately, it seemed to work itself out eventually, but uh, appreciate it. I hope you try this. If you did, um, you can share it with me on my social media. I've got all the links down there in the description, and all the materials that I use, colors and everything, are down there as well. And uh, we just thank you so much, guys, who've been supporting us on Patreon. You mean, mean so much to us. And we will see you on Tuesday night. Thanks. A traceable for this project can be found on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Hope you've enjoyed this project. Thanks for watching. Please leave a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time. Bye.